Well, at the Inyo County Board of Supervisors meeting on Tuesday, County Administrator Kevin Caruncio planned to come back with a request to change some positions in his department. Bennett Kessler filed this story. Caruncio asked the supervisors to delete one deputy county administrator position and add one senior deputy county administrator position. Now the funds for the senior deputy between $7,026 and $8,540 will come from the general fund and possibly some non-general fund departments depending on job responsibilities. Caruncio suggests an open recruitment for this job. In other agenda items, the Sierra Nevada Conservancy plan to come to the Inyo County Board of Supervisors for discussion on the Mount Whitney fish hatchery. Now representatives from Southern California Edison plan to show up to talk about Edison's Smart Connect program. And at 6.30 p.m. on Tuesday, the Inyo County Board has scheduled a public hearing on Caltrans's proposal to change the speed limit on U.S. Highway 395 through Independence. Now, this will go from 25 miles an hour to 30 miles an hour, and this is also to eliminate the incremental speed increases and decreases into the community. And this is similar to what Caltrans has done in the Big Pine area. Folks who have driven through there over the last couple of months have recognized that. Now also on Tuesday in Bridgeport, the Mono County Board of Supervisors expected to hear from County Council Marshall Rudolph, who planned to ask the board to oppose Assembly Bill 1692, which is designed to make changes in this year's new municipal bankruptcy law, which is AB 506. Now news reports say AB 1692 is backed by employee unions since it would give parties negotiating with cities more control over the mediation process that precedes bankruptcy. Now others say the new bill would drag out mediations prior to bankruptcy to the point that bankruptcy could never happen. Now, according to Cal Watchdog, many are concerned about the attempt to undo the agreed upon provisions in AB 506 only four months after the law took effect, and many say it is a bait and switch aimed at the cities of Stockton and Mammoth Lakes, which are currently engaged in mediation with their creditors under the provisions of AB 506, end quote. Now, County Council Rudolph also scheduled a closed session with the Mono County Board of Supervisors to talk about Mono County's AB 506 negotiations with the town of Mammoth Lakes and the potential impacts on county government services paid for by Mammoth Lakes. Rudolph said, quote, if the town files bankruptcy, and at this point everyone assumes that is likely, the county would be a party to the bankruptcy as a creditor, end quote. Rudolph also said the county provides dispatch services, the animal shelter, and IT services, which would be subject to cancellation or change under bankruptcy. Now, Rudolph said that county contracts can be renegotiated, but contract terms are for one year, and the county budgets and plans accordingly. For instance, the town of Mammoth Lakes pays Mono County $90,000 per quarter for law enforcement dispatch services. Rudolph said the animal, animal shelter involves a joint powers agreement between the county and the town that, quote, can't just be terminated or negotiated, end quote, he said. Now, the Mono County Board also planned to consider appointment of a new district attorney to fill the vacancy that will be created by D.A. George Booth's retirement at the end of June. Booth had strongly recommended that the board appoint his assistant, Tim Kendall. Well, a 15-year-old Mammoth High student was arrested last Friday. Now, this was following an investigation into alleged hacking of the school's computer system for the purpose of changing students' grades. Now, a press release from the Mammoth Lakes Police Department states that Officer Andy Lair, the school resource officer, became aware of the crime approximately one week ago and after interviewing several students, identified the subject and determined that he was changing the grades for other students for money. Now, the student, whose name will not be released due to his age, was arrested for unauthorized access to computers, computer systems, and computer data, and second-degree burglary. He was released to his parents and cited back to juvenile court. 
Well, we had some nasty gusty winds throughout the eastern Sierra today. We had a red flag warning for Bishop and Inyo County parts of Nevada as well. And also a health advisory was issued for Bishop residents due to blowing dust. Now the winds and low humidity make for extreme fire danger and along with significant drought in the west, this points to potential and serious fire danger for the next several months. Now that's why the Unified Command of Inyo County held a special meeting last Thursday. Ben Kessler filed this report. Now head of the command, Inyo Sheriff's Lieutenant Jeff Hollowell confirmed that there is a severe risk for this summer and that's why planners, first responders and agencies put their heads together. Hollowell said that quote, in light of dry conditions and the fear of a potentially bad fire season, we organized a special unified command meeting, end quote. Now, this meeting included county officials, local fire chiefs, also Cal Fire, BLM, Forest Service, Park Service, Red Cross, Health and Human Services, the Amateur Radio Club, as well as DWP, CHP, City of Bishop, and the Bishop Police Department. Now, Lieutenant Hollowell said the meeting got everyone on board to prepare for response if needed. He also said that via teleconference, a federal agency communication center meteorologist explained the dry conditions and watching continuing weather as it may affect fire danger. Now, Hollowell said everyone in the state is gearing up for the fire season. Hollowell said officials hope citizens will do their part by creating defense defensible space around their homes and preventing fire hazards. We had that story for you last week. Now the agencies and firefighters, he said, will be ready to do their part. Well, according to Florida news outlets, former Mammoth Lakes Visitors Bureau Director Mark Bellinger was found dead in Alabama after he resigned from his job as Okaloosa, Florida County Tourism Director and after he admitted that he spent more than $700,000 of tax money to buy a home and a yacht. Bennett Kessler filed this story. Now, according to Florida news sources, Bellinger left a suicide note at his home, was reported missing by his wife, and later died of an apparent drug overdose. Those who knew Bellinger in the eastern Sierra called him outgoing, friendly, and enthusiastic. Bellinger worked as the director from the Mammoth Lakes Visitors Bureau from roughly 2000 to 2004 when he moved to Palm Springs to head up the Bureau of Tourism there. Now, he took the job of tourism director, director of Okaloosa, Florida in 2010, and this was just after the BP oil spills. Now, the Huffington Post reported that Bellinger had been accused of misuse of public funds sent to BP to compens compensate for the oil spill. The Okaloosa County Sheriff is quoted as saying that Bellinger's death would not end a complex investigation into the Tourism Council's spending during Bellinger's tenure. We'll be back with more news.